Take your Bible tonight, if you would, please, and look at Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28, please. Acts 28, we're going to read verses 11 through 15 together. Verses 11 through 15 of Acts chapter 28. We'll read the verses responsibly, as we normally do, beginning on verse 11. I'll read 12. We'll alternate like that till we end together on verse 15. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing to read God's word. And let's begin together on verse 11 of Acts 28. Ready? And after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux. And landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. And from thence, we fetched a compass and came to Regium. And after one day, the south wind blew, and we came the next to, P- to Puteoli, where we found brethren, and were desired to tarry with them seven days. And so we went toward Rome. And from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Epii, Forum, and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. Now, Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture tonight, and I pray, Lord, that you'll prepare our hearts, that we'll be ready to receive the truth that you have for us this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the good music this evening, for uh, the, the wonderful spirit that's in this place, and Lord, I'm asking you now that you would continue to make our hearts ready, that we'd be prepared to receive the truth that you have for us tonight. We love you. We thank you for being with us this evening. Bless the special now in Jesus' name. Amen. I wasn't there by the shores of Galilee when Jesus touched those blinded eyes and made them see. And though I did not see that empty tomb that day, I still believe, for I know what Jesus did for me. I believe there is power in the blood of the Lamb, and I believe there is healing in the touch of His hand. But the greatest of all miracles is when my Jesus saved me. Yes, I know what Jesus did for me. I haven't seen the lowest sin, sick soul, how life anew and be made pure, pure and whole. And I have felt him lose the chains of sin and set my spirit free. Yes, I know what Jesus did for me. I believe there is power in the blood of the Lamb, and I believe that there is healing in the touch of His hand. But the greatest of all miracles is when my Jesus saved me. Yes, I know what Jesus did for me. Yes, I know what Jesus did for me. Amen. Father, we thank you for what you have done for each of us in giving your son to die on the cross for our sins. And not only that, but allowing uh, him to die, but to rise again from the dead three days later. And Lord, that now he lives 
and he lives inside of those of us who trust him. And Lord, we are thankful for the salvation we have, and we're thankful for the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I pray your help as we kind of share what uh, we've experienced this past week in India. Lord, that uh, it would be an encouragement, it would be a blessing to the people here at Bible Baptist Church. So control the next few moments that we spend together tonight. It's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. A little different kind of a message this evening. I'm not uh, going to necessarily, I'm gonna, just going to kind of go through the week of what we did in India. The, the passage I read tonight was uh, uh, for this purpose. Paul, if you remember, is on his way to Rome. They've been already, the, the ship is wrecked once, and they ended up on the island of uh, Melita. And then they found another ship, and they get on that ship, and he's heading to Rome because uh, he's appealed to Caesar. And as he's on this journey, now remember, he's on a ship with uh, many other convicts and criminals and uh, under watch, uh, so to speak, under arrest, if you will, of a centurion. And uh, they, uh, it says here, as we read tonight, that they got um, to this little place called Putioli. Putioli. And verse 14 says, where we found brethren. What an encouragement that must have been to Paul. You're on a journey. You're by yourself. You're around a bunch of criminals. And you get to a place where the ship stops and you find believers. You find brethren. That was a great encouragement to him that he could have some fellowship along the way. In fact, he went on further and said, uh, when the brethren heard of us in verse 15, uh, they came to meet us as far as Appii, Forum, and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. Boy, what a blessing it is. Wouldn't you like to be the kind of a Christian that would just be an encouragement to somebody else? The kind of a Christian that when someone sees you, they rejoice that they see you? And not, oh no, here comes so and so. You know what I mean? You don't want to be that kind of a person, all right? And so Paul got encouragement, and I was encouraged to go, I think, almost halfway around the world and find believers, find other Christians. Just, just amazing. Uh, on the trip this time, where, of course, Dr. Ken Fielder, because it's Worldview Ministries Pastors Conference, uh, Dr. Bob McQuery, whom we support, we support Brother Fielder and Bob McQuery. Uh, he's working with Worldview now. Evangelist Chris Miller, uh, he's a young evangelist, and um, he came out of the uh, Bill Rice Ranch, uh, trained under Bill Rice the third there. Uh, Brother Troel uh, from Jordan, Stephen Troel, who will be here for our Muslim conference. Justin Levine from Limpal came, our missionary. And uh, was there the first part of the week. In fact, I wanted to share with you a little bit. His uh, brother Levine brought chapel on Monday morning uh, to the student body there. And it was very interesting. He was discussing in Nepal. Brother Levine is actually in a uh, Tibetan, I, I guess you would call it a seminary, uh, with other monks, Tibetan monks, uh, taking classes. Okay, uh, he felt like that's a good inroad to be able to get to know them and know how they think and know what they're learning. And um, anyway, he was having a discussion with one of the students there. And this, this fellow is telling him all the different offerings that he offers to his gods. Uh, they have multitude of gods and they have almost an innumerable amount of offerings that they do. He said, it's, you, you, there's no way you can know them all. And he is trying to you know, go through all these different things he does for his gods. But he said, then he asked Justin Levine this question. He said, what kind of offerings do you give to your God? Now that's a question. I mean, if somebody from another country, now remember, you're not in America. You're in another country. Are you really going to say, well, you see, we get this thing kind of like a plate you eat off of. And we pass it through the rows and people put money in it. Oh, you buy your God off. No. You see, they don't have any concept of that. 
So you're not going to tell them about the offering. Okay? So what is it that we offer our God? You ever thought about that statement? And he said the biggest thing, and he said the Lord just gave it to him. He said, then, and he went to Genesis 22 where Abraham sacrificed Isaac. Well, was willing to. And he said, what we offer our God is obedience. Obedience to him. And he explained Abraham and Isaac and other things. And, and, the, and he grew very quiet, the Tibetan did. And he said, you, you offer to your God the best offering that there is. Really amazing. It was really a great, great message. Great to spend time with Brother Levine. And um, it was really, really good. Obedience. And so... Uh, after chapel on that Monday, we got into town. We, uh, uh, we went into town to do some shopping at their mall. Okay? And, and you, you, you can't explain driving in India. Uh, obviously, first of all, everybody's on the wrong side of the road, you know. Uh, and there are no rules. I mean, there really aren't. Uh, you just, there's, there's more... There's got to be more motorbikes in India than anywhere in the world. Everybody's got a motorcycle. And, and these guys, they just, all you do is you, you, you drive with one hand in the steering wheel, the other hand is on the horn. <laughs> I mean, and as soon as you want to pass somebody, you just pass them. And if motorbikes are coming the other way, they have to get out of the way enough to let you go through. And, and we had some times I thought we were going to get head on by another truck or a car and he pulled in just, in just in the nick of time. I don't know how they don't have more wrecks than they do. I really don't. It's just quite an experience. And so we uh, went into the, to the mall across the street from where the mall, there was a watch store called Titan, Titan Watches. I had to get a watch. My watch quit on the way to India. I looked at it, and it wasn't the right time. And so I went to wind it up, and my big hand wouldn't go around. My little one did. Said okay, time maybe maybe it's because the way I got beat up on the plane before I was on the plane from plane ride over to Paris. I was in an aisle seat, and uh, first of all, one fellow was trying to get his you know his suitcase up in there, you know, and and I'm just minding my own business, you know, and and the, and the guy drops it right on my head. I mean, I'm sitting there and I'm, I mean, knocked my glasses off. My glasses went on the floor. And I thought, man, what in the world? And I didn't think about it. I picked my glass up. I just folded them up and put them in my pocket. And uh, later on, oh, it must have been an hour or two into the flight, I, I was looking down at the floor, and I saw something shiny there, and it was one of my lenses from my glasses. I could have stepped and crushed that thing, but it, it, didn't, it was fine. And then somewhere on that flight, so I don't remember when exactly it took place, but a guy's, you know, come down the aisle, and, you know, the aisles aren't very big on airplanes, you know. And as he's coming down the aisle, I don't know if, if we hit turbulence or whether he just lost his footing, but he stumbles. And when he stumbles, he falls, and I'm on the left side. And I mean, he just forearms me right here. And, I go. and, and the poor guy across the aisle, when he stumbled, he hit me like this, and his other arm flew out like that, and he nailed that guy across the cheek. And I thought, wow, no wonder my watch quit. Uh, it's unbelievable. So we did some shopping, got some souvenirs and such, and got some things for my grandchildren. And um, they're pretty. Uh, the mall itself is pretty modern. Uh, where we had the, the food court there in the mall. I mean, you had KFC, Subway, McDonald's, Domino's, Pizza. All of that's there in the in the mall, about 20 minutes or so from campus, and. Um, so we, we, we got that done and got back to the campus without any more incidents. And um, uh, dinner was at 7 o'clock each evening. So 7 o'clock's dinner. And um, we was in a, had a guest room. Uh, before, we had stayed in the home with the Charians. Uh, but now they finished the guest rooms and such and uh, uh, near the men's dormitories. And so had a guest room down there with its own bathroom with a western toilet. Uh, like we're used to, which is a blessing. Uh, the Indians uh, just have a hole in the ground. That's what they use. And um, the you don't, you, you had a sink and everything, but you don't 
use their water. Okay, so you had bottled water in the room that you used to brush your teeth. You want to know what's hard? Is brushing your teeth and not using the faucet. Boy, you're just, it's just automatic. And, uh, you, I, had to, I had to hold the water bottle in my hand so I wouldn't reach and grab the, the, the faucet. And you had to do that with brushing your teeth. Um, they had solar panels on the roof for hot water. I think I was telling somebody today. And Monday and Tuesday, I took cold showers. I just figured they weren't getting hot water, you know. And then I was sharing that with one of the faculty members. And he goes, oh, no, no, no. He said, you, you should get hot water. He said, you just got to let it run a while. I said, like, what? He goes, oh, sometimes it'll take 15 minutes. <laughs> you know how hard it is to turn a shower on and just let it run for 15 minutes and not be in it? I, I feel like, you know, here it's like that's money going down the drain. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and so the next day, sure enough, I did that. I turned it on and waited and waited. And sure enough, 18 minutes in, it got hot. And then I got a hot shower, amen. That felt good. And uh, it, was, it was amazing. So uh, not a lot of water pressure, but it was at least hot. <laughs> Room had air conditioning in it. That was nice. And uh, had a ceiling fan, so it was very comfortable temperature-wise. Now, I will have to admit to you, I've never felt a mattress so hard in all my life. Now, I'm for a firm mattress. Don't get me wrong. But this, I think concrete's been softer than this mattress. <laughs> it was difficult. I mean, I, I, was, I was unbelievable. It took some getting used to. Uh, it hurt. Most of you know I have hip replacements. And, I mean, it didn't matter which side I laid on. It just hurt because it was so hard. Uh, and it took some getting used to. In fact, I don't think I did get used to it. But you realize how good we have it in America. How good we have it. Breakfast was at 7.15 every morning uh, in the Charian's home. It's interesting. I would want notice as I was going to their home for breakfast, the college students would be going to their meal. And, you know, every one of them carried their own plate in their cup. And I asked Dr. Charian about that. I said, he said, do you know uh, how many people I'd have to employ if we had to have somebody wash all those dishes? I mean, 400, and 400 students. He said, they bring their own, they clean their own, they bring them back, they do their own. And uh, that's the way he works it. So I thought that's pretty interesting. See, they don't, they don't ever, the Indian folks, they don't ever use utensils. Now, in our meals in Charion's home, we had the, the knife and the spoon and the fork, and we had, we had a lot of American food. For breakfast morning, there was always eggs. Uh, one morning there'd be pancakes with the eggs, and then there was French toast one morning with the eggs, and then they had a few other things there, and all, bananas at every meal. They had always had a bowl of bananas there. And um, so it, we were very Americanized in what we could eat. But the Indians mostly eat everything with their fingers. Uh, there was tortillas. Is that what you call those big round things, tortillas? They were had those at every meal too. And uh, sometimes they just spread... They had peanut butter and jelly there. They just spread peanut butter on there. And they ate, ate them with peanut butter. It was uh, really interesting. Anyway, the uh, church service then, the morning services started at 10 o'clock each morning. That was the main service in the chapel. Uh, generally, counting the pastors and the Bible college students, there'd be about 600 there in the service. Uh, great singing. Just great singing. In fact, let me see if I can play one of those for you. Dean's going to play some here in a minute. I was going to see if I could play you just a little excerpt of, their, of the singing that they had. Let me see if I can get this to work. And you won't be able to see it, but you'll be able to hear it, okay? Um, let's see if I can get the microphone to work. Will this one be on, Dean? Get this one on? Yeah, there it is. All right, let's see if this will come across.
not good. Those are Indian Christians. Many, many miles away. Um, the, I was going to see if I could find this one song that the choir did. The, they have a great choir there. And uh, let me see what this one is. could have heard that one a lot. Uh, in fact, I think they did that one twice because uh, Dr. Cherian liked that one. I thought we ought to get that one, Bob. That's a, that's a good one, buddy. You, it was just, just great, great music, great people. So we did 11 o'clock each morning, or 10 o'clock each morning was the morning service till 11. Uh, Dr. McQuery brought the first service on Tuesday. 11 to 11.15 is tea time. Uh, right up the chapel, there's a big soccer field, and the pastors will all be out there, and they had tea for them, and they all drink their tea uh, in the morning. And uh, then we had breakout sessions. We would have one session in the chapel. They would have the, all the delegates, all the pastors, uh, split into three groups and college students. And uh, so they would, they would be in the same place. If you were group A, you'd be in the chapel every, every session. And we rotated. The teachers rotated rooms. And then another group would be up in what they called the media room. Another group would be in a classroom. And so from 11.15 to 12, you'd teach a session. And uh, I was in the media room the, the first time. And then uh, you go, you teach your, your two. I have two. Uh, I taught on being a man of God and being an example church. And uh, so I teach those two classes to the people in the media room at 11.15 to 12. And then 12.15 to 1 was another session. And then you had a third session, 5 to 5.45. Uh, and so we would just rotate through those rooms. So eventually, by the time the Thursday came, you'd been to every room and everybody's heard your message. Okay? And uh, so we would do 11.15 to 12, 12.15 to 1, and then 5 to 5.45 in those three places. Then the main service at night was 6 p.m. And we would all be back in the chapel for the main uh, service. And uh, then dinner was at 7, right after the service that night. And that's when you had your evening meal. So I spoke twice on Tuesday, three times on Wednesday, and twice on Thursday. So I got to speak seven times in, in three days. And uh, just, a, just a delightful time uh, with those people there. Friday morning, there was chapel at 8. And then we got to tour the elementary school. Uh, said they, I told you a little bit about the story this morning about how they got the property and they they built a, a wonderful school there. Uh, they have 468 children uh, in the school. Most of them are Hindu, uh, but they bring their children to the private school and they tell them they're going to learn about Jesus and they're going to learn about God and they're okay with that. Uh, they've seen families saved through that ministry. Uh, and this is, uh, I think, do you have that up, Dean? I'm going to, he's going to show you a couple pictures. This is the, the they're, they're getting the third floor done now. If you can see the rebar sticking up and such. And, and uh, boy, I tell you what, they don't, they don't have OSHA. And uh, they don't go by any building standards, I'll guarantee you that. So uh, I'm not sure where I can go. It won't be in somebody's way. But, and then, go ahead, Dean. That's Dr. Cherian. The other fielder behind him, he took us up to that third floor to walk around and to see it, okay? 
These are some of the school children gathering. You're going to see the gathering together to sing for us. Go ahead. Sing. Here we go. <laughs> I apologize for being dark. children, oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son. Uh, they're, they're getting it. Wonderful. So uh, just, just an amazing, amazing thing. Then um, Friday morning, we, we went to elementary school, and then the Worldview uh, Institute there on the campus, they've given them a room on campus for their translation institute. They had like an end-of-the-year party. The Overtons have been the ones teaching that this year. Uh, James and Tori Overton and their family, and uh, boy, have they just done a great job. What what amazing family they have, and uh, been really impacted. They had five students in that institute, and uh, two are graduating. The one is the fellow I mentioned this morning who's going back to Myanmar with the Gospel of Mark that he has translated while he's been in the school, and he'll return now to his, his tribe in Myanmar, his people that have never had anything of any part of the Bible in their language. And now he carries back with him the Gospel of Mark. And they'll read for the first time in their lives the Gospel of Mark in their language. And uh, they're excited about that. He's excited about that. Here's a man with a wife, three children, and he's left his home to come so he could learn translation and linguistics, so he could translate the Bible. I think he has 10 or 12 people there in the, his tribe in Myanmar uh, that, are, that are going to work with him now and begin to translate more of the New Testament. Amen. So it's exciting things. Another uh, one, Bishra, is going to be graduating, and uh, he's going up to work with Brother Levine in Nepal and going to uh, kind of intern with him for a year and again, learn more about translation work and such and uh, with a language for his folks uh, that he's going to have. Then there's like five or seven others at least they had interviews with that to possibly get into that course for next year. Well, they had a little end-of-the-year party there, and it was great and uh, just uh, enjoyed it. The Overtons, each one of them, there were five students, and there are five people in the Overton family, so they each took one of the students and said something about them, shared memories with them. We saw a little video of the highlights of their year, and uh, they just did an did a outstanding job. Then just uh, that's Friday. We went back to our room, and I did a little bit of laundry. They have, they have washing machines, uh, but they don't have dryers. You hang them out on the line. Uh, that's how you dry things out. So did a little bit of that, had a light meal at 6, and we left at 6.30 for the airport to head back home. Uh, it's just an amazing place. I, I had a video. I couldn't get it uploaded to, to Dean in time to show you of the campus there. I wish, I wish I could show it to you. I have it on my iPad. If you want to see it afterwards, I'll show it to you. It's just an amazing campus uh, that God has raised up there. And that, that campus, and by the way, Dr. Terrian, uh, he's going to be in the States in the summertime. Uh, he's going to come here and be in our church on June the 4th, uh, and you'll get to meet him. And uh, he, he just, just an amazing fellow. When he got the property that the college sits on, um, it, a Hindu man owned it, and they weren't, he couldn't get anybody to buy it because it was, number one, rattlesnake infested, and number two, there was no water. 
And so he got, he went ahead and bought it. He believed God laid that property on his heart. And he bought it from the man, and the Hindu man thought he really pulled one over on it. And he slept out there the first night he bought it. He laid out the palm, uh, from the, the leaves from the palm tree, the prawns, and he laid on that and slept on the ground when the, with rattlesnakes all over the place. And uh, that's, uh, you, you just have to understand this man's faith. You see this campus and the buildings, and everything is paid for. There is no debt. God, he, he told me, he said, there's a story behind every building. Every building will tell you a story and how God provided. Uh, the water story is amazing. He got a water company out there to, to, to drill for a well, and they drilled. They were there for a week and kept drilling different places and deeper, and, and they told him, they said, there's just not water here. And he said, man, we were praying. The Hindus have gathered around. Everybody's watching this. And, and he prayed, and he prayed, and he said, I prayed, and God told me that night, he said, tell them to go down where they are 50 more feet. So I got up in the morning, and I told the, the, the guy, said, we're going to pull up, there's no water. He said, I want you to drill right where you are 50 more feet. He said, I don't care if we drill 50 feet or 500 feet, there's no water here. He said, drill 50 more feet. I'm telling you, pastor, there's not, he said, drill 50 more feet. You, you know Dr. Cherry, and he he can be pretty uh, persistent. And so the guy drilled 50 more feet, and guess what happened? <laughs> Water. That was 30, I think, 32 years ago. They're still using water from that well. And the Hindus said, your God is a powerful God. And they gave testimony to that. Just amazing, amazing what, what God has done there. And um, it'll, be, it'll be a great joy for you to hear him. Uh, when he comes to America. And uh, 116 graduates this year uh, that will be going out into ministry. So uh, wonderful, wonderful. They also have an orphanage there, I think he said, with 42 students, or 42 pe children in the orphanage. Uh, he'll, he'll call it, he called a boy over the other day, he said, this is 16-year-old, and he said, Sammy, I think he said, and this is my son. He just, they, they just, they're his kids. Uh, just, just an amazing, amazing work. Let me give you several observations, okay? Several observations. Number one, they're great servants of God all over the world. There are great servants of God all over the world. 170 pastors at this conference. And then there's, I think, 129 where Brother Yoder was. That, by the way, is about... 2,500 miles from where this conference was. Get an idea of how, how far away it was. And, uh, I mean, India is such a big place and so many people. There's a billion people in India. It's four times, almost four times the United States, size of the United States in, in population. There's just people everywhere. Unbelievable. And Brother Christopher, Benjamin Christopher, he kind of, uh, was the moderator of the meeting, and uh, he's a professor at the college. But we also found out he started. He has started three churches, still pastors a church. One of them, uh, he started one right outside the gate of the campus. And of course, on the campus it's English, but outside the gate it's uh, the language that they speak, the dialect that they speak there. We sang songs. He, he would sing, "God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me." And then every morning we sang it in different languages. There are, they're like, he, he can speak like five different languages, or five or seven. I mean, and just, just an amazing, amazing fella. And um, that, the church right outside the campus there, he said they have a hundred baptized believers that meet there every Sunday. Uh, all of them former Hindu uh, that are now converted to Christianity. Just amazing. There's great servants of God all over the world. It's great to see. Number two, the second observation is this. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel still changes people's lives. Just amazing. Uh, I, I met the one fellow. I have his card a, at my house. Uh, he, had, he told me after one of my sessions, he goes, I was a Hindu priest. He said, I was, uh, my story is like the Apostle Paul. He said, I thought I would drive Christians out of India. That's what I wanted to do, and that's what I was trying to do. When, when God saved him, 
And he says, I got saved, and my wife and my children got saved. That was 12 years ago. And he said, now in 12 years of evangelism, and he goes out and preaches in different places, he said, I've seen 500 baptized converts. See, in, in India, it isn't just, and like a lot of foreign countries, it isn't just the profession of faith that makes the difference, but when they decide to get baptized, boy, that separates them from their family. That's their commitment that they're going to follow Jesus Christ. So 500 baptized believers in his ministry in 12 years of evangelism. Uh, what a changed life. What a changed life in this man had. What a blessing. Number three, I thought they do so much with so little, and we do so little with so much. They do so much with so little. I thought about that as those Indians sang. All I have needed, his hand hath provided. And many of them think nothing of sleeping on the floor. I had a hard time with a hard bed. But it was a bed. There were covers on the bed. There was air conditioning in my room. You know? Uh, we just, we have it so good in, our, in America. Most of the pastors have nothing but their Bible. Most of them, most that I saw didn't have shoes. They had sandals. That's what they wore. Very humble man, but very sincere man, wanting to reach their people for Christ. Just, a, just wonderful. Number four, God uses anybody who's willing to yield themselves to him. There's a man on campus there that works with Dr. Cherry and an American. Uh, I think it's Mincy is what they call it. It might be Mince, but it's Mincy, I think is how they pronounced it. Dr. Mincy... I'm guessing has to be between 75 and 80. Uh, he's still teaching at a college in India. Uh, Bob McQuery just turned 70. Brother Wallace, Dr. Mincy taught Bob McQuery Greek when Bob McQuery was in college. Okay? And now he's in India. At this age, when he could be retired and, you know, wearing Bermuda shorts and playing shuffleboard, uh, he's in India still training servants for Jesus Christ. Still teaching, teaching the Bible there. Amazing. Uh, Dr. Stouffer is the music director. And again, another American, he and his wife, I don't know how long they've been over there, but they just do amazing work with the music ministry. Uh, the songs that they sing, it's just, just incredible. And uh, just do a great job. And uh, here again, people at, at age where they could retire, and they're over there serving God on the other side of the world. Every, every Brother Overton was telling us, every third Wednesday of the month is no electricity. They just shut it off for a day. The, the country does. Or their area does anyway. They call that a rolling brownout or something, but uh, they just know when it's the third Wednesday of the month, they're not going to have electricity for that day. And uh, that's just the way it is. And so, uh, wow. Evangelists, missionaries, pastors, hey, some loud and animated, some very quiet and timid, if you will, but all of them used by God. You know why? Because they're yielded to Him. They're yielded to him. What a blessing it was to spend time there. Thank you for the privilege of allowing me to go. It was such a, such a great blessing. In two years, every year, they have an evangelistic crusade uh, on the property. They, they do it out on the soccer field. Uh, they will have as many as two to 3,000 on a night out there, and they just preach evangelistic messages. They, uh, what I understand, he says, on the main field... They have somebody preaching there, and then they'll have smaller ones on the outside where they're translating into the different languages that are present. And uh, I think this past year they had like 700 and some uh, that made professions of faith uh, during their week of evangelistic meetings. And he talked to our group about being willing to come and, and connect that with the pastor's conference. In other words, go week to week and put that all together and be part of that, and that would be exciting. 
Uh, that's going to be, I think, in 2019. So, you know, you know what it is? God's work is a big work. God's work is a big work. We get sometimes in America that it's all right here. It's not all right here. It's big, and it's all around the world. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful for a church that is willing to embrace getting the gospel to the world and getting the gospel to every creature. Now, they had one other, see if I can pull it up here for you. I hope I got it. I don't know if I got all of it or not. Let me try this, John, uh, Brother Dean. See if this works. They ended the conference with a hallelujah chorus. You want to hear it? I mean, you, want to see, you probably can't see it. Some of you close now. Outstanding, really was. And if you're just, if you're in that room, it's just, it's electric. It really is. It was a fitting way to end the conference. It really was. Let's stand together, shall we? And we'll have a word of prayer. Father, thank you now for this evening, and thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us, and thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, not only in the United States of America and in this place, but all over the world. Lord, help us to see that 
this is a big work. You're a big God. Thank you for believers who are all over the globe. That, Lord, we can go anywhere in the world and find brethren and be encouraged. Thank you for the work that you've raised up there in India with Dr. Charian. We pray your continued blessing upon them. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the opportunity to go and to be able to minister there. Thank you for a church that has caught the vision of what you want to do. Lord, not, not just in reaching our community, but in reaching our world for Christ and doing our best to punch holes in the darkness that is still there throughout the world of folks who've never heard of Christ. Now, Father, I pray that you would encourage us and that you would help us to continue to do what we know we should do. May we offer to you our obedience and do what you desire us to do. Now our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed and I realize this is not a typical message and there's not much of an invitation or so to give but I just, I don't know if the Lord spoke to your heart about something tonight or not and maybe, maybe God's touched a young person's heart about being a missionary or going to a country going somewhere, just saying, you know, I think God may be dealing with me about just being, being willing to be a missionary and to take the gospel to the world. Maybe you just here tonight and say, you know, the Lord really opened my eyes that there are believers all over the world. And I want to thank God for that. I just, just want to know if somebody spoke, if the Lord spoke to your heart tonight, you'd say, Pastor, please pray for me this evening. God spoke to my heart. Would you slip your hand up tonight, Christian? Oh, that's good. That's good. Thank you for being sensitive to the Lord. Amen. That's good. We'll, we'll take just a moment, and we'll have just a brief invitation. And if God has spoken to your heart, and you want to respond to him, the altar is open for you to do it. Lisa's going to play. Bob will sing. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this evening, will you? That's right. Oh, to be like the blessed Redeemer, Amen. this is my constant longing and prayer. Gladly I'll forfeit all of us treasures, Jesus, thy perfect likeness to wear. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, Blessed Redeemer, pure as a wart, come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee, full of compassion, loving, forgiving, tender and kind, helping the helpless, cheering the fainting, seeking the wandering sinners to find. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as a word. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee while I am pleading, pour out thy spirit, fill with thy love. Make me a temple, meet for thy dwelling, Fit for a life which thou wouldst approve. Go oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Father, we thank you now for today and thank you, Lord, for, again, being a great God. 
We're so thankful that you're our God and we're your people. Thank you for what you're doing, not only here, but around the world, working in people's hearts and lives. And God, help us to lift up our eyes onto the fields, for they're wide already to harvest. Lord, make us mindful there's people right here in Grove City, Ohio, and on the southwest side of Columbus that need to hear about Christ. And I pray, Lord, you keep us busy about your business now this week. Dismiss us with your care. Make us mindful you go with us from this place. May others see Christ in us this week. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's sing it together. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus. Anywhere and everywhere I go for it's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You're dismissed.